To be a good bike designer, you need to really understand how the variables of frame geometry and components and all that stuff, how all that comes together to make the, the bike that you're riding. And so you could build bike after bike after bike and you would know the geometry of each bike and you could learn a little bit from each one, but a really good way to learn about bike design is to know the geometry of the bike you're already riding. And you might not have a geometry chart that's accurate or you might not have anything at all for each bike. Some of these measurements like the effective top tube aren't that hard to figure out. Other ones are a little bit harder and so Today, I'm going to bring you along as I try and figure out a system for deriving frame geometry that you don't have in front of you. Uh, let's get into it. So this is a, a video where I'm winging it, trying to figure out what I'm doing as I'm going, and I don't think that the result is perfect, but I think that it's helpful for certain things, and so, um, you know, you can apply this better than I did here, and I'll tie that together at the end uh, also. So I haven't done this before to this extent, but I've been thinking about it. So we'll just see how well this works. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the frame and I'm going to lean it against something with a vertical edge like this. And I want to get the rear wheel uh, in, in the vertical plane and then I want to lean something against it. You could do this in like a doorway or something. Basically, I'm just trying to get the bike standing up on its own so I don't need to hold it so that it's, uh, it's vertical because you're gonna get a more accurate reading for some of these things if the bike's not tipped over uh, and you're not gonna be fighting it. So that's how I wanna position the bike. And now I need a couple measurement tools in order to uh, grab measurements. And I'm just gonna plug them into BikeCAD as I go and I'm gonna build a bike rather than from you know, dimensions out of, my, out of my noggin, it's gonna be off of a frame and it should come together into a you know, reasonably accurate model. So the tools I'm going to use for this are BikeCAD Pro on my computer, just enter values as I go. I got this digital angle gauge, which I got for $35 at Harbor Freight, uses for everything all the time, pretty good. This is my DIY calipers, my DIY yardstick calipers. I have a YouTube video about this. Y'all are snoozing on this, not many views on that video, it's pretty useful. And then, uh, and then of course, I also have a video about my favorite Mitutoyo calipers, and I think with this I should be able to mostly get the bike measured up. So. Uh, Let's do the uh, the C-tube angle and the head tube angle. Those should be pretty easy to get a rough number on with this guy. Seventy one point seven. Now this one, I'm gonna go on this side because I have the head badge on the front. Seventy three here. Looks good. So the top tube angle is 3.7 degrees. In BikeCAD here, you can change how it figures out the uh, the front end distance. I said that was 3.7. So I'm going to use this model because I can measure the effective top tube length and I can measure the top tube angle. And these other ones are maybe not always the same. Here's a tip I picked up a long time ago about measuring your saddle angle and your, your center to top is that if this like square taper crank has an eight millimeter hex on it, which I guess is kind of dinosaur technology now, you can take a four millimeter uh, Allen wrench and if you sit the flat on the flat, then, uh, then you should be measuring from the center line. You know, it's not uh, incredibly precise, but uh, four millimeters is half of eight. And then it gives you a stop, so you don't need to get down there and look at it and worry about the parallax angle. So center to top here is about, uh, we'll just say that's 58 centimeters. And then to the top of the saddle is 765. The head tube length is 147. And now for the head tube length, based on this model, it doesn't actually give you a value for head tube length. It would be derived based on the rest of this information. So I'm just gonna turn on the dimension for the head tube length, head tube length. And now I can compare that to what I'm at. So it says 152 and I said 147. So I should have a little note for myself there. I'm going to try to measure the bottom bracket height. Uh, 
It's about 265. So I want to measure the chainstay length and that is from the center line of the hub to the center line of the bottom bracket and uh, it's, it's along the center of the bike. And so I can't measure that because I, I can measure sort of the hypotenuse from this point to here. You know, I, I can measure along an angle from here to here. That's not really what I want. But uh, for, you know, this is not a super high stakes measurement. I mean, if we look here, we have horizontal dropouts with a lot of room for adjustment. So for what I'm doing today, I'm not super worried about getting it within a millimeter or two. I'm just going to lay it along here and I'm going to sight it. And it looks like it's about 435 millimeters. And so I'm just going to go with that number. So right here, this, uh, this variable, this variable, and this variable have to do with the space between the top of the tube and where it, uh, where it joins. So like the top of the seat tube and the top of the top tube, or here, the top of the head tube and the top of the top tube, or the bottom of the head tube, you know, like these are these variables. So if I change this from 13 all the way up to like 25 and you look up here, whoops. You know, you'll see that move. So I'm going to take rough measurements of that. And this is my uh, 0 to 150 millimeter and 0 to 6 inch uh, scale. I use this for a lot of stuff. And I'm just eyeballing here trying to get within a millimeter or two. Looks like maybe 13. And we'll say the same for the bottom. And we'll say that's 20. This wouldn't always be dire, but uh, but you can measure the lower headset stack height, so we're about 12 millimeters there. Uh, you know, some headsets really are a lot taller than others, and when you get into, um, like in the old school, like track bikes that had super crazy tight clearances and stuff, sometimes that matters more. So I'll just enter 12 millimeters for that value. It's already a 12 on this model, so yeah, that's fine, I don't really care. The upper headset stuff, that affects the ride, but I'm modeling the fixed part, the weldment of the frame that can't really be changed. That's what I'm trying to model right now. And then it's, you know, people know how to plug in stems and spacers and that stuff. So I want to plug in the, the diameters of all the main tubes. Uh, I don't know if I need to necessarily, it depends how you're measuring, but it's pretty easy to do. So with my calipers, this is 28.6. I mean, it says 28.7, but it's a 28.6 tube with paint on it. This one is 31.8, and this one is 31.8, and this one is, uh, we'll say that's 36.3. I don't know what that's supposed to be exactly. Seat tube 31.8, top tube 31.8. I think that one was 28.6. Down tube. Okay, so I love my DIY yardstick calipers. Here's how I'm gonna use them on this. I need to know the wheel's true diameter because that affects the, you know, I, I measured the bottom bracket height. Well, if I wanna know the bottom bracket drop and if I wanna know a lot of stuff, I really need to know the true diameter of these wheels. And that is a hard thing to measure unless you have something like this. And I want it, I don't, I don't want them to be crooked like this. I want them to be in plane with the wheel. And I want to sweep them until I find the high spot right there. And we read 702 millimeters. I almost forgot uh, the effective top tube length really a relatively easy one to measure. So effective top tube is where you hold this guy level. And so I'm gonna sight it along the center line of the seat tube to the center line of the head tube. And I think it's supposed to be at basically the, the height of this junction. So where the center line of this and this meet up, that point 
but then you go from there you measure level not on an angle you measure level back to the center line see it's like you're measuring the seat post sort of and uh if i do that it looks like it's about mm, 60 and a half or something 605 So the fork is a really important component because the length of the fork and the offset of the fork, that's going to affect, uh, you know, it's going to affect things. And so you want to have a good measurement on the fork also. If it's like a carbon fiber fork, you can uh, try and look up the dimensions off a manufacturer's website or something like that. You know, if it's a surly pacer fork or whatever, you can look that up. Uh, in this case, this is a, a bike that I custom built, right? So I actually have all the information. I'm using this one as an example of how you do this if you didn't have the geometry. This is a different fork. I don't feel like pulling the fork out of that bike, but if you really wanted to know, this would probably be the best way to measure it. Uh, so I'm gonna measure the axle to crown. And so this bike here has quick release dropouts. I'm gonna use this scale to kind of bridge between them and get into the crotch of this, like into the, into the very top part. And so this is for a nine millimeter axle. So I'll just, you know, add four and a half millimeters to the measurement that I get. And so I'm gonna measure from there to uh, this little ledge back here where it reads like 377. And then I'll add four and a half millimeters to that. So the axle, the crown is, uh, yeah, it's 377 plus four and a half, which would be, 381 and a half. So this is pretty clunky, but I'm gonna try and uh, measure the rake of this fork uh, as best as I can with simple tools quickly. So I have a one, two, three block, and then I have this Paragon Machine Works block for inch and an eighth. And now I'm going to use this quick clamp <laughs> and see if I can get this to hold. All right, so that's eh, it's kind of down. And now I'm gonna use my height gauge. Let's see if I can check that it's sort of level. Let's see here, yeah. So that's pretty close to being level. Uh, and now, I'm going to set this so that it's at about the height of the center line. If there was an axle in there, if there was a quick release axle. So that looks like it's about on center line. I'm going to measure that height off of the table. And I'm getting 126 millimeters. Now I'm going to set the height gauge on the top of the steer tube. Now measure the height off of the table. It's 91 millimeters. So the actual center line of the head tube, I measured the top, but the center line is gonna be half of the diameter. It's gonna be the radius away. So if it was at 90 millimeters on the top, it's actually gonna be uh, you know, 90 millimeters minus parentheses 28.6 divided by two. So that's 14.1. So 90 minus 14.1 is actually the center line. So that way you can measure the center line of the dropouts that I measured, subtract from that the, uh, the center line of the steer tube, and that'll give you your rake. And so uh, if we do that on screen here, the math looks like this, and uh, that's our rake value. So what I just showed about the fork is like not the ideal way to do it and it requires some tools and it's clunky. It's like a way to do it and you might have those tools. Uh, it's a suggestion. Uh, if you don't want to take the fork off the bike, this is how I would sort of eyeball it. So I got my ruler here and I just kind of line it up to what looks like the center of the axle. And then you always got to worry about parallax angle, you know? You know about parallax, right? Like uh, you're driving a car and it looks like you're going 55, but from the passenger, it looks like you're only going 50 because you're looking at it from a different angle, right? You guys know about parallax. Anyway, you always gotta be very mindful of that when you're when you're sighting something from like, you know, uh, two inches away or whatever. Uh, there's really a lot of, uh, parallax becomes a huge factor. And so I'm, uh, I'm sighting it from as, as close as I can get to right on there. It looks like this is about four, hundred millimeters uh, let me look more closely maybe a little bit less uh, we'll say 398 it's hard to be very precise with this method 
So as far as figuring out the rake while it's on the bike, I really don't know a very good way to do that. Uh, you know, there's always a way to do it. You know, you can use trigonometry and you can you can measure what you can't measure. You know, you can try and triangulate or something. It's really, I can't think of a very good way to do it on the bike. Uh, and that's probably not the most crucial thing to the rest of the frame, but of course the rake and the steering geometry is all a big part of how the bike rides. Uh, so, you know, you might want to take it off. If you had a proper frame building fork fixture, like an anvil or a Sputnik or something that had graduations, to let you know, uh, you could just put the fork into that. That would be a decent way to measure it. There's all sorts of ways. I'm trying to think what are like the most practical and accessible ways. So within BikeCAD, there's all sorts of visual stuff that you can do. And uh, a lot of it's noise right now. Like, you know, that bike doesn't have rim caliper brakes. And these ones here, it looks like they're interfering with the wheel. That doesn't matter. I'm not worried about that in this model. But you can tweak that stuff. There's all sorts of adjustments to be made in here. So this is just uh, how I'm roughing in the sketch of a bike I already have so that I can get to know it. Now, uh, if you want to check your work and you want to see how close your model really is, you can, uh, you can measure some dimension uh, that, that we didn't measure. So for instance, if I wanted to measure from the top of the head tube to the ground, that might be a good check that all this other stuff kind of adds up. So let's try that. So I don't know exactly how the best way to do this, but yeah, if I wanted to measure from the top of the head tube in the center here, uh, start dimension in Y, and now, oh yeah, yep, okay. I drag it down here, yeah, this works pretty well. I drag it down to the bottom center of the wheel, end linear dimension, okay. So here we have the top, of the top center of the head tube to the ground, basically. 851 millimeters, that's probably within, you know, two or three millimeters at least. Let's see what we get when we measure that on the bike. So here I've got like 865, so that's, you know, that's off considerably. But what you can do is you can just kind of tweak your numbers and you can double check stuff, remeasure things until you, you bring it in a little bit closer. So two things. First thing is that I didn't really talk about components that much in this video, and I should have. The components that you put on the bike super matter because you're not riding a frame, you're riding a bike, and the components are a huge part of that equation. And if you don't model in the components and model them fairly accurately, especially the handlebars can be kind of weird. Watch my mountain bike design part two video where I talk about some of that stuff. Um, th I think that's really important, so I, I should emphasize that more. And then the other thing is that the, the idea here is step one, build the best model that you can that's actually representative, that actually has good numbers, and where you can triangulate the measurements that you took with some other um, measurement, and that that checks out too. Once you have a pretty good model, then let's learn about design. So what matters for design? I think the main things that matter for bike design that make one bike ride differently than another with similar components and stuff is like the wheelbase and the way that your body is distributed heavier to the front or heavier to the rear. Those are really meaningful numbers. And then like how high you sit up, like if you had a really high bottom bracket or if you're like on a tall bike, it's a totally different ride characteristic because your center of gravity is so high and that's exaggerated. But anyway, those kinds of things like, uh, I think are really salient and say a lot about how the bike feels and your fit points. You know, your ass to your uh, feet to your hands, handlebar drop, all that stuff. That is actually what we're after. So like, we're gonna go by any means necessary to build a good model that checks out, that's like accurate and representative. So that's the one thing we're doing. But then after that, okay, we've checked that off the list. Now let's actually be designers. Let's think about design. Let's think about the whole bike, not just about the frame. I should have drawn that, uh, more clearly that that's the point of what we're doing. So I wanted to add that into the video here. The objective is just to, to learn a little bit more about what you might already have laying around an old 10 speed frame or some custom bike you got from somebody else or whatever it is. Uh, you know, you, you, you want to know what you're riding so that you can use the, the feel and the ride characteristics of that to help inform how you design bikes going forward. You can learn a lot more if you kind of know what it is you're already riding and what you're already familiar with. So I hope that helps you, and uh, we'll see you on the next video where we're talking about something related to frame building yet again.